You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, on Alternative Talk, AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage and finance expert, Tina Mitchell. Welcome back to The Money Hour with your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, right here on 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, February 4th show. I am dedicated to my listeners, providing you with the tools needed to make informed decisions on all matters that affect your money. If you're hearing my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast, but you can always call the show at one 855 400 1150 or online at themoneyhour.com. Again, that's one 855 400 or online at themoneyhour.com. And in studio right now, Noelle Bortfeld, Chief Marketing Officer with Windermere Real Estate. And Noelle, thank you so much for coming back in studio. Oh, you're welcome. It's great to be back. Always have <laughs> a pleasure to have a conversation with Noelle. And a little uh, background if you've missed her past uh, previous segments. Uh, Noelle, again, is Chief Marketing Officer and is responsible for all consumer marketing activities on behalf of Windermere. She oversees branding, advertising, interactive and direct marketing, lead generation, program management, social media, public relations, and even marketing. Her experience includes brand marketing for Fortune 500 company as well as global agencies. She also leverages a leadership background in web application development and consumer relationship management, CRM. Recently, Noelle made Boston Logic top 10 to watch. Noelle, again, thank you. Just really excited to have our conversation. And our topic today is going to be how to market a listing. So, Noel, tell us about the types of products and services that you've marketed in the past. Well, let's see. About 30 years ago, I started my career at Nestle, and I was privileged enough to work on Infant Formula, which we got to launch in the United States. Uh, I also worked on Contadina tomato products and um, was able to launch Contadina Pizza Squeeze, which I still buy to this day. <laughs> so that was a very <laughs> fun product. And um, I also worked on Nescafe and Taster's mm-hmm. Choice. And then... Later on in my career, I spent a lot of time working with Hewlett Packard. So a lot of a lot of um, marketing experience, definitely. So let's talk about marketing a listing. Everyone knows about the four P's of marketing. How do you apply them to marketing a listing? Let's go ahead and start out with product. Okay. So yes, there's a product, price, place, promotion, and kind of the the way the consumer packaged goods industry frames it. So I try and bring that same framework and bring it to the real estate industry. So from a product standpoint, when you think about it, you're talking about a listing or a home. And that can come in the form of anything from staging the actual product or the mm-hmm. listing, um, creating some improvements, um, doing some repairs, actual curb appeal when people just drive up into the neighborhood, um, how the home is showed, whoever's holding the open house, what is that how does that person talk about the product? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and also there's the whole element of inspections that's going to affect your product. So we Definitely. really try and think of all those levers when we think of product. So Noel, let's say, what about price? I mean, that's gotta be really, really important and, and not just in a, a, a market to where there's not a lot of activity going on, but it's as important, if not important, not more important, it's as important, if not more important than the market that we're in today, when you think price might not really even matter that much, when it does, because we all want to maximize the price. So let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Tina. I think you have to look at market t- conditions, and if you look at it locally, prices have been rising, and we're short on inventory. And so things like market conditions can very much affect how a a realtor um, prices this home. Um, People tend to do comparative market analysis Mm -hmm. as well. But again, that's just one data point in the pricing mix. Um, Sometimes people look at, um, what's my return on my investment? You know, how much equity do I have in this home? Um, How will that affect the price? Can I walk away? What's my breaking point? Mm -hmm. Uh, what What do I need to maybe cover some other expenses? They also look at um, some of the price drops that might be happening in other areas. Yes. Probably not so much in this market right now, but price drops do happen. Um, days on market is another factor. Mm-hmm. If, if your home is sitting there for 60 days, you might want to consider dropping the price. Um, another element of pricing is just th- looking at uh, the other homes and what the listing price was versus what the actual sales price was. So you look at that ratio. And so if people are selling it for like 95% of asking price, you might start to think about what is your asking price and how does sure. that compare? Makes sense. So, Noel, how about place distribution? So distribution, that's probably the simplest. That's how uh, listings are actually distributed across the web. If, if you can think about how all the MLS then mm-hmm. distributes 
those listings to Zillow or Realtor or to the brokerage's actual website. So that that's a fairly straightforward one. The industry's done a great job with distribution. Uh-huh. So it, consumers can find the the, the, the listing somewhere, yes, somewhere definitely. online. That's not an issue really in this industry. Uh, let's get into the final, which is promotion. Okay, that's a big one. <laughs> I think a lot of agents will say, well, how should I market my listing? Mm-hmm. And I try to remind them of the, the three aforementioned P's because those are as important, but I think a lot of focus is typically on promotion. Um, that can come in the form of photography, open houses, signage, <laughs> brochures, mm-hmm direct mail, um, videos, actually very hot, um, floor plans, 3D tours. We're getting into some augmented like reality, that. which is yeah. fun. <laughs> you know, any kind of advertising as well, and that's really falls under promotion. So l- let's talk about, I think, you know, the most important thing to consider, which is really developing the plan and putting this all together. Absolutely. Um, I think the most important thing is to stop and think about who that potential buyer is. Could be. I think we we don't stop and think that this is actually the perfect home for mm-hmm. this type of individual, mm-hmm. and I think more thought has to be given to that. And you know, when I've talked with you before, Noel, we talked about you know the stories and the importance of uh, really putting together a story and that marketing plan. And when you know what that buyer is, when you know who that targeted buyer is, then you can really bring that story in because we are talking about selling a home which is a life store at life um, a style and it's somebody's story is going to be told there absolutely so uh, how does someone develop an uh, objective so I always think of objectives as being smart and I think everybody knows that acronym acronym um, smart s for specific m for measurable a for actionable r for realistic and t for timely so when people write their objectives, I'm really hoping that they're going to use smart objectives, meaning let's, here's an example, generate three qualified buyers in the next 30 days. You know, that's very measurable. You're either going to get three qualified buyers or you're not. Yes. <laughs> you know? um, it's very easy to measure. And if it's in with the, within 30 days, you either did it or not. So really setting um, measurable objectives that are within a time frame, then you know whether you're going to be successful or whether you need to tweak your marketing plan. And what about measurement? I mean, because we all know that's really important is the measurement of that plan. Yes. And a lot of times I think folks struggle with um, how to measure something. Uh-huh. But in terms of tying them back to the, to, to the objective itself, you think about, well, did I actually generate three new buyers? Yes. Or potential buyers? That's a yes or no. Yes. That's very easy to measure. Mm-hmm. Some other media is tougher to measure, mm-hmm. but a lot of times you can think about, okay, what is the response mechanism that I want to add to this advertising so that I know what is the call to action. Yes. That way the metrics are a little bit easier for you. Yeah. And when you're really, when you are have a targeted uh, group that you're marketing, which is really the name of the game and you have a lot of those touch points going in, those touch points do start to kind of inter, you know, mingle in. So it sometimes can be difficult. Um, can you talk about, uh, let's going back to the audience and the potential buyer. Can you give me an example? Um, sure. i you know, I, I use this one in, in a class that I teach, uh, the wealthy modern eth- enthusiast who travels via private jet. Wouldn't we all like to be that person, yeah, right? Yeah, that sounds so, fun. Yeah, <laughs> you think of the, you know, wealthy, it obviously speaks to their income. Um, mm-hmm. A modern enthusiast, enthusiast, meaning they love all things modern, modern architecture, um, okay. modern furniture, yeah. just everything modern. Um, but traveling via private jet, you know, mm-hmm. that's obviously talks about their lifestyle. Yes. This is just sort of one extreme. So in the class, sometimes I'll say, okay, here's your primary target audience. And maybe here's your secondary, the one that you think might be a potential buyer too. It might be a Chinese investor. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. So knowing those two, you could develop your objectives, your strategies, and your tactics. So how does that affect the media that you're going to choose? That's a great question. I think um, a lot of times you can look at that um, target audience and all and develop almost like a if you think about a bullseye in the center you have the tribe <laughs> the target audience uh-huh. you know if you thought about um, those people that travel via private jet maybe um, you would do your advertising in Velocity magazine for example okay. um, beyond the tribe and that might be um, beyond that first very targeted concentric circle within a within that within that concentric circle, you can actually just think about, all right, where are the places I can meet with these people in person? Uh-huh. Okay. Then you can start to pull out a little bit and say, all right, what kind of local advertising 
can I do to reach either one of those, the primary audience, the modern enthusiast, or the secondary, the Chinese person, um, the Chinese buyer. It could be um, looking at the Puget Sound Business Journal, which is a great mm-hmm, local mm-hmm. newspaper. Then you start to go, okay, how can I expand outward to maybe the Western United States? Maybe you need to be in Alaska Beyond, you know, magazine. Um, then you get out to the international global place, and maybe you're, yeah. you're sending your listings to com, which is a a website that is targeted to the Chinese buyers. Okay, so really focusing that all that all in. So how does geographic coverage play in the mix, Noel? Well, I think it does go back to that target audience. Mm-hmm. Um, and international, if you don't have any reason to think that your buyer is coming from another country, then don't spend the money yes. marketing your listing there. Yep. Um, I think sometimes people try and just do the same things over and over again Mm -hmm. without thinking about really who is that potential buyer and how is the best way to reach them or how can I reach like-minded people that will actually talk about this listing to the people that might hear about it through word of mouth. Yeah. So since we're talking about uh, marketing for a listing and, you know, with all of the Uh, education and the training that you do for the real estate community and especially within Windermere, what do you see as the primary mistake that is happening when marketing a listing? (laughs) I call it the spray and pray. I was going to say it's got to be. (laughs) (laughs) Because it really just completely contradicts Uh understanding who that potential buyer is and thinking about that and thinking about what kind of vehicles you would use to reach them. Spray and pray means you're Uh just going out there with maybe a direct mail piece that just goes to everybody um, on in your database. Yeah. And you're not really thinking about, well, gosh, maybe some of those people in my database actually already just bought their home last year. Yeah. Why are they getting this Got it. information? So you have to be relevant to, to folks and, and not just put it all out there to everybody because it's, you don't want to appear irrelevant. Yeah. So, and in, in, in really, if I'm hearing you've got that, that target market, you know that target market and what what people they are, and then pick the marketing things that you're going to do and put that out. Um, but you do agree as, as, as well as if sticking with, and I think a big challenge or a mistake that you see anybody make, any uh, entrepreneur in the marketing is they try something, it doesn't give them the results quick enough, and they give up. You've got to really be it in, in for the long haul. Absolutely. Yeah. And you do have to be able to pivot. Yes. Because if you aren't meeting your objectives, and and a lot of times people just don't even write them down. Uh Uh-huh. If you write them down Mm -hmm. and they do say within 30 days, you should put it in your little calendar, I'm going to look at my objectives in 30 days and did I meet them or not. Yeah. And then if I haven't, pivot. So, Noelle, with the uh, with agents, because you're behind the scenes and seeing everything that's happening uh, with agents, what are the what are the challenges that they're dealing with right now? And what advice for because I have a lot of a lot of agents that listen to the show. And, um, you know, what would be your advice for for those the challenge? Boy, get really creative with ways to encourage your sellers to okay. sell right now. I think sellers now have the equity that they might have lost. Yes. So it's time to talk to them a little bit about that. Uh-huh. I think the the challenge also for them is to find the next place for them. Yes. <laughs> With inventory being short, you, it's hard to get your clients to really think about what is that next mm-hmm. step if mm-hmm. if if it's if hard to isn't. buy right now, right? Yeah. The easiest ones are folks that are willing to maybe um, retire and go to that second home in a, yeah. in a different market. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, and I've, I've got a complimentary, a complimentary coaching program I do for realtors, and somebody had just brought up a couple weeks ago, and I thought it was just a brilliant marketing idea. Um, she is does a lot of, you know, cold calling with expires, but she said she goes back to people that they're, it expired like two years ago because now they've got equity. They were looking at selling, and maybe it just wasn't the right time because the equity wasn't there, and I thought that was really brilliant because there are people out there that need our services and it's finding those people and connecting with them and finding out what their needs are and how you can be that solution for them. So exactly. Yeah. No, well, thank you so much for joining me back in studio. It's always a pleasure to have you and I really appreciate you coming in and spending time with me. Thank you so much, Tina. Great okay. to see you again. Coming up on the money hour, what are the consequences of working with the wrong world tour? Well, we have Aaron and with Christine and company Keller Williams right here on 1150 AM KKNW after this short break. 